I'm in this 2012 Chevy Malibu. It came in today for rear shocks and front struts. Uh, this car I worked on it a few months ago and I basically put like new outer tie rods, I believe maybe like ball joints, stabilizer links and bushings, you know, things that were just clunking around. And it made a big improvement, but the car wasn't 100%. So I told the owner, hey, it still needs front struts and rear shocks. They're pretty much all blown out. Uh, so, like I said, it's been a few months, but she finally brought it back. I just finished putting all the new parts on. And this thing drives nice and smooth, nice and quiet now. So it's a combination of all the parts I changed before, as well as the parts I just put on today. And uh, it doesn't sound like a piece of crap anymore driving on the road. It's nice and quiet taking bumps. So that's about it. Um, it's freaking like 95 degrees today. And I turned on this car before I started torquing down all the lug nuts. Because I'm like, let me get that AC pumping, you know. Man, I get in this car, there's no AC. But uh, I could hear the AC compressor turning on. And by the way, the AC compressor sounds like a freaking bag of bricks. You know, it just sounds horrible. But it does turn on. The problem we have here is there's no fan. So I don't know if we just have a bad blower motor or it's a combo of blower motor and resistor. But since it doesn't work, I'm just going to leave it off to not run that AC compressor. It doesn't sound too good. But that's just about it. I'm going to tell the owner to take this one in for a wheel alignment because I could tell the wheel's a little... It drives straight, but it's, it's a little off. It's a little weird. So, of course, you know, changing the complete front truss. So... So I'll make sure to tell her to take it in for wheel alignment. So let me explain to you how you could potentially lose a customer. I'm not saying I lost this customer. All I'm saying is I've been texting her and she hasn't been replying to me. So that kind of implies something, right? Anyway, based off of what I just said in the video, it was a hot day. So I'm out here sweating, working, right? Trying to get the car fixed. And I started up the car a few minutes ahead of time because I figure I want the AC pumping. So by the time I'm done tightening down the lug nuts, I want to get in a nice cool car, right? Who doesn't, right? So it's a little break from reality. It's, it'll be nice to be in an AC cold car. So I get in the car and there's no AC in it. I'm like, well, that sucks, but whatever. And here's where the problem comes in. According to the customer, the AC was working when she dropped it off. Well, when I got in it in the morning, there was no AC. So within that short time frame of her dropping the car off and me getting into it, something failed. And guess what? That's electronics. Sometimes electronics just randomly fail. It doesn't matter if the car was at, in my possession. doesn't matter if it was at her house or in the parking lot of Walmart. It was going to fail no matter what. It just happened to be a coincidence that the car was here with me when it failed. And I feel like... She, uh, you know, she hasn't said it, but I kind of feel like she's uh, pointing the finger at me or thinking that I potentially sabotaged her car intentionally, which is absolutely not the case. I've never done that 21's car and I never will. I'm not like that. I'm out here fixing people's cars. I'm not out here trying to mess with their cars to get them to bring it back. Why would I do that? It makes no sense. Honestly, I told her, bring it back. I'll diagnose it. And if she would have just brought it back and said I diagnosed it and found a bad blower motor or a bad blower motor resistor, I would have changed those parts for free. Of course, I'm not going to pay for parts. I, I didn't damage the car, you know, but point is I would have changed those parts for free, free of labor, only because I feel bad that they failed while the car was here. Simple as that. But she never brought the car back to me. Um, I texted her a few days afterwards or yeah, maybe like a day or two afterwards, reminding her to take the car in for a wheel alignment. Never got a text back. Then I waited like two weeks, sent her a text. Uh, hey, did you ever get your, you know, your blower motor working? And if so, what was wrong with it? Again, never got a reply. This is what's leading me to believe that she may think that I sabotaged her car intentionally, which is absolutely not the case. So unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that, guys. Um, you know, anyone who watches my channel knows that I'm as honest as I can be. I you know what? If I leave a boat loose on someone's car, I can't sleep. I literally lose sleep. It drives me crazy knowing that I, I missed something or I didn't do the best possible job. There's no way in hell I would sabotage anyone's car ever, especially on a hot day. You know, that, that's like the worst thing to do. Take away someone's AC on like a 90, 95 degree day. Who does that? That's horrible. You know what I mean? And you guys could see the picture that I got here up here, this static image. 
these are the parts I changed on her car, the front struts and rear shocks. I had absolutely no reason to be inside of her car and I didn't. Now I've been talking way too much, so I'm just going to go ahead and end this right here. Just want to explain to you guys how, I don't want to call it miscommunication because I've tried to communicate with her, but sometimes people just don't want to listen. And basically you can't change people's minds. No matter how good of a job you do, once in a while you're going to get someone who thinks you screwed them over. Even though you clearly didn't. It's just part of the business. And, well, if you lose a customer, it's their loss, not mine, okay? Because I'm as honest as I can be. Just want to say happy 4th of July to everyone. Today is July 4th. I know you guys aren't going to see this video until after this day. But still, the point is I said happy July 4th, okay? Uh, yes, I'm working today, and it's just one car. It's just a uh, front brake, so it's not a big issue. I figure I'll knock it out real fast, and this will be the only car for today. I could relax, right? Unless AutoZone sells you the wrong parts. So we got the wrong brake pads. I already confirmed that. And the wrong rotors as well. The new one is about 11 and a half inches. The one that came off the car is about 11. It's a Nissan Sentra. So owner's gonna have to exchange the parts. And at this point, I'm just waiting for her to come pick up the parts to exchange them, get this knocked out. And unfortunately, I have plenty of yard work to do today. The grass has to be cut, weeds have to be done, all kinds of crap, so. <laughs> So I got the brakes done on this Nissan, taking it out for a test drive. Everything's good with the brakes. But there's one weird thing I noticed that whenever you come off from a complete stop is this thing will go up to like 2000 RPM and it just starts to shake a little and the car is not really accelerating until after 2000 RPM and then it starts to pick up. So it is very consistent and to me it feels like the transmission on this thing is on its way out. Keep in mind, this is a CVT transmission. Um, so I'll let the owner know my thoughts on it. Tell her, don't put any more money into this car than you have to. Because, yeah, this transmission is on its way out. Here I have this Chevy Colorado back in the garage. It's here for a oil pressure sensor. Uh, you guys remember Miller the filler? Looks like his work isn't holding up so well. I guess this is one of those situations where what you pay is what you get. Quality work right here. You can see how everything is wet underneath the truck here. And if you look straight up right there, you can see the oil pressure sensor. Don't want the green connector on it just puking its guts out. So let's go ahead and swap it out. Looks like it's gonna be pretty easy. All right, so we just finished putting that power steering. I don't know why I said that. Okay, so we just finished putting the oil pressure sensor on this thing. That was a few days ago, actually. And now it's back because we have some power steering lines here, and these are OEM GM parts. So went ahead and ordered those. And if we take a look underneath the truck, let's have a look at that oil pressure sensor. There it goes right there, nice and dry. It's not leaking, looks really good to me. But here goes the actual power steering lines right here. Well, not those. <laughs> it's these right here. You can see all the crap that's built up on them and going all the way up to the reservoir up there. So these lines are definitely way past their prime. All right, so I got the old line off, honestly not too bad of a job mine is trying to break this fitting loose right here it's a bit of a knuckle buster other than that it came off pretty straightforward can't complain so uh let's get ready to put the new one in all right so i got the truck running put brand new power steering fluid in the system power steering seems to be working let's go ahead and check all of those things oh look at a big old mosquito <coughs> Got it. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's go ahead and check those fittings. Make sure we're not leaking. Spoiler alert. I already checked them. They're not leaking, but let's go look. Let 
I'm in this 2011 Dodge Durango. Uh, just got dropped off because they say it's, it shakes while driving. Okay, um, so I'm like I said, I'll take it off for a test ride. First thing I notice is it's in drive. See the D right there. My foot is off the brake pedal, yet this car is not moving. And if you give it a little bit of gas, it immediately comes to a stop. This thing has something going on with the brakes. Um, I thought I heard a pop come from the front left side when it first started moving. I think the front left caliper is hanging up and it's causing some sort of resistance. And once we get it moving, say we start doing like 10, 15 miles per hour or even 20, I can feel a shake in the steering wheel. Okay, so see it's coming to a stop all by itself. I got my foot off of the accelerator pedal, not on the brake either, and it came to a stop all by itself. Um, so I think what's going on here is this thing has warped rotors, so it's going to need rotors and pads up front. That's what's causing a little bit of shake coming in the steering wheel. And the reason why she's feeling it while driving is because we have a sticking caliper so a uh, caliper that's always applying pressure is always going to transmit any and i just heard it again uh, some sort of pop from the front left side um, it's always going to transmit those vibrations or imperfections in the rotor into the steering wheel because it's being applied so let's go back to the garage we'll jack it up and see if that caliper is sticking all right guys just as i suspected this wheel it's locked up i cannot budge it at all won't even move a centimeter you can see it is on or it is not on the ground see it's how it's not touching the ground and this thing won't budge at all that caliper is locked up um if, if i had to take a wild guess here i'd say uh the caliper sticking is the cause and then the shaking steering wheel slash bad rotor and pads is the effect so what happened is the caliper sticks, creates all this extra friction while you're driving. So it puts a crazy amount of heat into the rotors and causes them to warp. So I, I hope you guys understand that and hope it makes sense. Let me go ahead and jack up the front right side and just make sure that side's okay. Uh, but as of right now, this side is gonna get a caliper and a brand new brake hose. You guys know how I do already. If it's getting a caliper, it's getting a brake hose. Front right side just fine just how it should be yeah so this thing needs a set of rotors uh, front brake pads front left caliper front left brake hose one more thing on the front right side now i have to go check the front left side since i noticed this you can see we have a torn boot on that ball joint for the upper control arm so I'll try to get my pliers in here i don't got much space here but... see that That upper ball joint is no good. Now she said maybe like a year ago these struts got replaced by the dealer. She said those struts in there about $500 each. I almost had a heart attack. That is crazy. She, she said something about she tried like some aftermarket ones and she said they didn't work. I don't know what the heck that means. But after the aftermarket ones didn't work. She took it back to the dealer and they said oh it's because you need OEM parts. So they charged her. $500 per strut. I don't know what labor was or if that was included. <sighs> Look at this. I hate crap. The, the car is not even that old, but you could clearly tell that it's got like a door ding right there and right there. And people don't protect it, so it just starts to rot away. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, the car is not new or anything. It's a 2011, but there's no reason why this 11 should be, you know, the door already starting to rot away. Over. Uh, tiny little problem it's it's crazy how do you know when a person lives in the hood well when they need an alarm this big it's absolutely crazy <laughs> all right so no issues with the upper ball joint on the front left side i got the green light from the owner to so go ahead and replace the pads the rotors front left caliper front left brake hose we are not touching the ball joint because uh i know it's counterintuitive but she's gonna be taking it on some sort of a road trip in like two days and there just isn't time i don't have time to do that upper ball joint or upper control arm um so we're only getting done the easy stuff I'm starting to lose daylight out here and customer came with the parts found out they did not bring the caliper but that's my mistake i forgot to send them the picture even though in text i said caliper but i'll take the i'll take the blame for that one but also 
they got the wrong rotors even though i sent them screenshots of autozone's website these are the parts they need these are the exact part numbers bring me this part and they still brought me the wrong rotor that's amazing right um so anyway the lady told me to keep the pads and the rotors because she had recently bought this stuff from autozone and you know look at the thickness on these pads it looks kind of like brand new so yeah i believe her that explains why all the lug nuts on this thing were loose i mean they're like stupid loose it's, it's it's scary you know i guess people try doing their own brake pads and they just don't tighten things down right so anyway i'm still waiting on for every pretty much everything the only thing they were able to bring me is the brake pads and the brake hose which honestly without the rotors or the caliper i can't do anything can't, can't move forward with any of this stuff so i'm just taking apart whatever i could trying to make some progress and like I said, it's skin. It, I know it doesn't look like it in camera, but it's starting to get dark out here. And these mosquitoes are just eating me alive. So I'm trying to, like I said, make any progress I can. And then I'm going to run inside the house. And I found another sign that someone's been in here doing their own breaks. If we come on the backside. Look at that lower bolt. I did not touch that. that that's how it is. I tried to loosen it right now and it seems like it's on there pretty tight. So this can't be good, right? What's going on here? Alright, so I got the caliper off, or the bracket, and that bolt was really difficult to get out. And we can see what's going on here. I threaded both of them in so you can see. See how this one in front is pretty much straight up and down? Look at that one over there. So that's what's going on here. Someone ran it in at the wrong angle and started cross-threading it. What a freaking nightmare. Wow. Alright, so the game plan here is I'm going to grab a tap. Hopefully I have a tap that fits this. And I'm actually going to start running it in from the back side because we know it's going to start straight on the back side because those threads aren't really too mangled up. And hopefully by running the tap in from the back side, we'll push it all the way through and it'll clean up some of this mess. Hopefully, that's the plan. Alright, so I got the tap started in from the back side and I'm just about all the way through. So it looks like this is going to work. I felt pretty rough going in with this tap. You can tell the threads are all mangled up. So what I'm going to do is, let me see if I have a die for this same thread pitch. And I'm going to run the bolt, the caliper bracket bolt, through the die to clean it up. And that way everything goes together nice and smooth. Alright, so the bolt itself was pretty mangled up as well, but we got that all cleaned up. And now, go ahead and start throwing it in. As long as you start it straight, it's going to go straight. Look at it all the way down. No problems at all. And yes, I'm going to be sure to put a little bit of blue thread locker on these bolts when I put it back on the car. It's amazing how people just screw things up, you know. So you saw that gap, right? It was between the bolt and the bracket. That means this caliper bracket was bouncing around. It, it's crazy. Well, it's fixed now. And, um, you know, some of you are probably wondering, you're going to charge the customer more because it's going to damage you have to fix it. Probably not in this case because... I'm not doing anything else right now, I was waiting and yeah, it sucks to have to deal with this, but it was actually a really simple fix. And like I said, I'm still waiting for parts. So it's not like it took time away from doing anything else. All right, so it's about 9 p.m. and the owner just dropped off the parts like a minute ago, okay? So initially I told him it was gonna be done today because I figure, you know, one caliper breaks up front, not a big issue, would knock it out today, but it's taking way longer than it should. So I told him, hey, it's not gonna be done today, so whatever go kick rocks right <laughs> um and on top of that it just started to rain a little bit i felt the raindrops so i'm like you know what? i'm not messing around with this it's late let me just close up and that'll be it so i got the parts hopefully they are the correct parts i'll come out here tomorrow and knock this thing out and that'll be all set i asked them who touched your car last because we got you know bolts that aren't tight lug nuts that are loose um bolts that are cross-threaded and they were like oh some guy named mike he did our brakes and the lady was like could it have been the people who last rotated my tires and i'm like no it was whoever was in here to do the brakes she goes yeah it was some guy named mike let me tell you this mike stop doing this stupid shit okay stop hacking up people's cars yeah your name is mike i'm talking to you okay <laughs> i hope mike is watching you know this is horse shit. Make sure you tighten down the lug nuts properly, man. Don't cross thread shit. If you do cross thread it by accident, fix it. Don't just run it in. 
it's now the next morning and as you can see i got the front right side done new rotor new pads and that bolt for the caliper bracket is actually torqued down and there's no longer a gap you can see that so the bracket for the caliper is being held in place just how it should nice and sturdy i'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other side we'll put the caliper and the brakes on the front left side guys the frustration with this car is beyond anything i can ever imagine okay i mean on a scale of one to even i can't okay <sighs> the caliper we got the wrong caliper the rotor is the right size this time but this caliper bracket or the whole assembly is for the larger brake setup so it has the 14 inch rotors okay so look i sent the woman the parts i took screenshots of the parts from autozone's website here goes the freaking part number i told her this multiple times just literally grab your phone this is their face here's the part number right in their face here here look 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 how hard is that to do i told her did you show them the picture i sent you yeah yeah i did i did no you didn't this is not the right part the part number, the picture I sent them says 18-B5297. There isn't supposed to be an A at the end. And I looked on their website again, and of course, the A is for the one with the large 14-inch rotors. I don't understand this. You know, she's she's gone back to AutoZone like three times because they keep giving her the wrong parts. And every time... Did you show him the picture? Yeah, I did. Clearly you didn't because the picture I keep sending you is the correct part and you keep bringing me the wrong parts. You know what? I'm not going to deal with this. It looks like the only thing that's different here is the bracket. Okay, so the bracket is made uh, a little bit larger to accommodate the larger rotor. So what I'm going to do is guess what? It's getting the original bracket put back on it and we're just going to use the new caliper and then as a core... AutoZone is going to get this caliper back in return in the box and they're going to get their brand new caliper bracket in the box. I'm not dealing with this crap. You know what? You keep bringing me the wrong parts. You are getting your used caliper bracket put back on your car. So here we are. Got the new caliper installed new retainer clip using the original bracket because it fits the new one does not like i showed got the new brake hose on it everything is tightened down and uh i open up the top bleed valve right here and we start to get brake fluid dripping out of here so it's pretty much gravity bled and that's going to be like 95 percent of the work right there so at this point i'm just going to get in the vehicle and let's go ahead and test the brake pedal see how it feels we should have pressure at this point because the other side is done and uh just about done here talked to the owner already told her i got it to work uh unfortunately we cannot use the nice shiny new bracket we're gonna have to reuse the original one and i just got some grease on my hand so i told her we're gonna have to reuse the original one but at least i could get it to work and it's gonna save her a trip from having to go back and forth once again and more waiting and blah 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 and she was concerned about well uh is the original bracket fine to reuse and i told her yeah there's nothing wrong with it at all it's just it just sucks because you pay for a new bracket and then you got to reuse the old one because they technically sold you the wrong part. It's a good thing the caliper is still exactly the same. The pedal already feels good. There's good pressure right there. Honestly, if I wanted to, I could just leave it like that. I'm sure this car is going to stop just fine. The gravity bleeding uh, works very well, as I've showed before. And um, yeah, I would drive it like this, no problems at all. But for the sake of just saying I did it, uh, we're going to go ahead and connect our little bleeder with the with the hose on the nipple right there. And we'll pump the pedal a few times and get some more fluid out of that caliper. But it's pretty much all set. And this is why, after even though gravity bleeding works very well, it's why I still like to bleed the brakes the traditional way to try to, you know, get some fluid out of the caliper. Because there is a noticeable difference. The pedal does feel a bit firmer now. It's not a massive difference, but there is enough for me to notice. As you can see, I use my vacuum pump right there and I got that right on the bleed valve of the caliper. So basically, I'm trying to pull the fluid out of the caliper at the same time that I come in here and I pump the pedal like two or three times. 
go ahead and close that valve and it's all set this thing is ready to go here's a pro tip sometimes it's very easy to miss one of your brand new connections that it's leaking in this case everything was fine but it's just something that i've uh, gotten in the habit of doing whenever i do jobs like this is for example right here this connection also once you're done connecting everything and everything is nice and tight spray everything brake parts cleaner and dry it off with a rag make sure it's completely dry same thing for all of this spray this if it was wet from you know the brake fluid dripping out of here when you're bleeding it spray all of this with brake parts cleaner dry it off to the point touch it with your hand make sure there's no fluid make sure it's nice and dry get in the car turn the engine on and pump the brake pedal until you get your pressure and keep good amount of pressure on that brake pedal just kind of like if you were in a emergency stop okay hold pressure on there for at least I, I like to do like 15 20 seconds good firm pressure and then come out here with your hand once again all the places you checked put your hand see if it's wet you know it wasn't wet before because you should have checked it before if it was nice and dry before you did this and it's nice and dry after holding all that pressure on the pedal then there's no leaks here so that's what I did here nice and dry my fingers are dry nothing even after putting all that pressure on the brake pedal actually before we take it off for a test drive let's make sure that the wheel actually spins freely if you remember before after pumping the brake pedal this wheel would stay locked up let's go ahead and try it now just gonna start up the engine nice good pedal feel applying some good heavy pressure right now one two three four five there we go wheel moves no problem at all just how it should okay so the brakes feel great i don't hear any weird noises or anything like that the car stops absolutely fantastic um and we don't have that wobble in the steering wheel anymore. That's the main reason why this car got dropped off is because the owner was saying that there is a wobble while driving, kind of like a shake. And it was a warped rotor that was caused by a sticking caliper that overheated the rotor. So all of that is gone. Like I said, the car stops great. Everything sounds great. And uh, another thing is the car no longer feels like it's pulling a trailer behind it because of the sticking caliper so it accelerates just fine now and it stops just fine um, everything seems to be really good on it now the last thing would be that upper control arm that loose ball joint um, I don't know if we could get a ball joint separate or if we have to replace the entire arm but that's gonna be a project for another day because like I said they have to take this on some sort of a road trip or something whatever it's not my call right <laughs> um, but everything I did is great and the car is driving great. Uh, the initial problems on why this thing got dropped off were fixed and other problems are fixed as well.